the system waits for 500 milliseconds to do some processing to decide that you're really, really done, and then eventually it comes back at you. It's waiting because it's not sure you're done. It's not sure that you just haven't paused for a moment. And it really has to wait that long because if it didn't, then this number here would be bigger. This is the problem of the system not knowing that you're still talking and breaking in and interrupting you. Okay. So there's a fine trade-off here. And the way it's done is, well, they err on the side of caution. So the dialogue just, they just drag on. So how do you improve that? Well, how, why do people not have that problem? Right? When I'm talking to Olaf, right, we just talk and we laugh and we go back and forth. And it's very fast. It's a very fast pace. So there's something called turn-taking. And turn-taking is the way that two people, when they're talking, they say, you know, I'm at a floor, just, just wait a minute, I'm talking, or I need to talk in a minute, or I'm done, it's your turn. And the way that people manage those is, some of you, I've talked about this before, but um, they use it using prosody. So the pitch, the tone of voice, and back channeling is my favorite example. Back channeling, so back channeling are things like, uh-huh, yeah, right. So when he's talking to you, you show that you're still listening, you're not interrupting, you say, oh yeah, right. It's very important. If you, if you leave those out, people will think that you're not interested in the book. <laughs> so, so what did we find out? So we found out that... I tried to. <laughs> so we know a few things about this. We know that, well, listeners time their back channels, not just at random points. They time their specific times. And, well, when do you do it? You might think naively, well, when you get some new piece of information, you'll say, aha, uh -huh, to show you understood it. But in fact, if you do the study, and you did the study, it was long and painful. If you do the study, you find out is Prasadic keeps from the speaker. So in English, if you hear me talk, so this shows time, this is pitch. Pitch goes up sometimes, it goes down sometimes. Okay, ups and downs is pitch. If you're talking along, the pitch goes down to about 110 milliseconds. I just did that. The pitch went down for a little bit. So we were supposed to not, we were not to think. Okay. And you can actually do this, you can build systems that will respond to this rule. Um, and I built those systems. And other people have taken this rule and implemented it. Um, so at MIT, the Media Lab, they built a system. So their motivation was they said, well, there's all these old folks out there. They like to tell stories, but you know, maybe the grandchildren live far away. So we'll create. <laughs> <laughs> but it just can't sit there. It has to sort of nod and smile. And it has to nod and smile at the right time. And so they, they took the rule that we developed and they put it in their system and they're reporting results. Um, more recently, uh, ICT. Remember, uh, Kathy came a few weeks ago to talk about summer internships at ICT. Um, so at ICT, they built something called the Report Agent, which does the same thing. You tell a story and it nods in the right places. And it's actually supposed to be valuable because you know, there's a lot of cases where you want to record information from people. Right? If you just record them with a blank screen, you know, they don't give such a good performance. But he's done studies that show if you nod at the correct times, <laughs> as defined by the rule that we have, you get the people to say to be more confident, they like the system better, they're more relaxed, and the explanations they produce are more comprehensible. Okay, so this, this actually doesn't matter. Um, these are still in the research labs, and hopefully in five to ten years, it'll actually make it in the real world. So when you call up Wells Fargo or Bank of America, you know, the user experience will be completely different from the way it is. Other signals? Okay, so I said that was one example. So in general, we're interested in <coughs> when people are talking, you know, what can we tell apart from the words that they say? And one of the things you can tell is how fast they want you to talk to them. So if you're in a situation where the other person is talking too fast, you can slow them down. There's various things you can do. It's very real you will say, you are talking too fast, please stop. But to just sort of back off or nod more slowly or your responses will slow down. And so we're figuring out what those things are. And we have various rivals around the world who are looking for other kinds of clues. Um, okay, so that was one type. So we're interested in sort of commercially important dialogues and also sort of random free chat. We're also interested in persuasive dialogues. So this is, we're looking in the far future, and this is Jaime's PhD thesis, so we'll, we'll let him talk about that in a little while. Um, tutoring dialogues also. So tutoring dialogues are interesting. So those, those of you who are TAs know that when a student comes to you with a problem, you sort of have to not only understand what the problem is, but you have to understand what they think about it. Do they want to solve it themselves? Do they need a lot of help? 
Do they want praise? Do they want you to take some distance? And so getting that right is, is a skill that you pick up as a TA. And uh, it makes a difference. It's, it, you know, it does make a difference in how much the students learn. And so let me just give you an example. So this is from Tasha's thesis work, which we're, we're still continuing. Um, so the game here is, you know, imagine you've got a test tomorrow in the countries of South America. Or some, or some chemical, and some, some stupid thing you just have to memorize. And you've got a tutor, they're sitting with you, they're giving you, asking if you know it, they're going to give you some hints. Okay. This is the sort of thing you might hear. Uh, you have to name all the countries in South America. Uh, I know, uh, Peru? Good job. <laughs> okay. So the question is, the puzzle is, okay, good job. Now that, that kind of seemed right in this context. It seemed like an appropriate thing. Why exactly? And why, in a different context, would that be completely wrong? Please name the six colleges of Utah in any order. Okay, College of Education, College of Engineering, mm -hmm. College of Liberal Arts, College of Health Science. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that gives you says, mm -hmm. So why? You know, little, tiny, very subtle things, but you know, you add up a whole bunch of these subtle things, and that is what makes a conversation successful versus really mechanical. Um, and so Tasha spent a lot of time doing a lot of analysis, um, coming up with some rules for predicting exactly what words are appropriate. And we quantify them in terms of various acoustic features. There's, there's a lot of work I'm going to tell you about. Uh, we evaluated it. So those of you who were fortunate one and came into the lab and did these experiments, this is what we were doing. And uh, we really appreciate your help. Um, so <laughs> we came up with two systems, one that seemed to do it right and one that was random. We compared them, and guess what? The people actually liked the system that produced a good job when it was supposed to, and a very good, and a hum, in, in the right sequence. So it does make a difference. The next step is Raphael's work, which is to figure out you know, why, it's not just that you say very good, it's sometimes you say very good, or you say very good. What's that difference? We think that may be even more important, and he's going to tell you about that at his thesis defense. Okay. Um, three more slides. So we're interested in you know, the subtleties of human communication because they actually make a difference. We're also interested in the basics of speech recognition. So speech recognition, so here's your equation, okay? Here's your equation. And the reason for the equation is the speech recognition problem involves taking a speech signal, some vibrations of air molecules, and inferring what the words were that were behind that. So somewhere in my head there's some words, somewhere in your membrane there's a speech signal, and you have to do you have to do the inverse problems. And it's complicated because there's all sorts of noise. Right? My mouth moves in funny ways, and there's fan noise and things. And so what hits your ear, you know, is not completely unambiguous. So the task is of every speech recognizer is you find the highest probability word series where that's given by R max over W, the product of the probability of the signal given the words and probability of the words. This says find the word sequence. That is most likely not only because it matches what you heard, but because it's a priori, just a common thing to say. Right? So if I say, you know, can you turn off the right? You all heard that as light, probably, but I said right. Okay. Well, okay. So you're, you're too analytical. Most people, okay, <laughs> this will sway their opinions to a huge extent. Right? Just you know, you know what I'm going to say. Right? To some extent, you have a good publicity model of what, I, what I'm going to say. Computers don't have that. Okay, we're interested in proving that. Um, and this is Alejandro's work. So we're interested in you know, not just the sequences of words, it's like symbols that you'd see on a page, but we're interested in them as things that happen in time. Because actually it is the human mind that's creating these things. And it turns out that if you think about when the words appear, so in the first second after I start speaking, in the second second, the third second, so if you break down the utterance, you find out that what words appear really changes a lot over time. So in the first second, words like yeah and oh are very common. By the second second, words like I and you are the most common. When you get really into it, words like and and the are most common. So we're going to build this into a speech recognition system and come up with, hopefully, more accurate recognition. So, so the game we're playing here, Steve, is a quick. Yeah, if you learn all that new words, if you learn all that new words, I remember that. That doesn't pay off, strangely enough. Not not in this phase. That, that comes in a subsequent phase. 
Okay, coming later. Okay, so so the game we're playing is right, you can't actually go down and just think and say, gee, you know, why do I say very good? Why do I say a lot? You can sit around and think about it all day, and it doesn't help. Believe me. What you have to do is you have to gather data. So you see some people having a conversation. Sometimes we can sit facing apart so that there's no eye contact. Sometimes we have them face together. Um, we listen to the data. We write little scripts. We write big scripts. We write programs. We write test beds. This, this is work is, is you know really requires you know, linguists can't do it because they just don't have the skills to build the tools to test the hypotheses. Um, we try a little bit of machine learning sometimes, and then we actually build the system because you know if you have a great theory that sort of explains the data, you put it into a system, and you know people don't always like it. Most of the time we'd be lucky. If they're not lucky, I won't tell you about it. We just design a different experiment. <laughs> And so, you know, this is a big part. So if you're interested in that group, you have to learn how to, you know, integrate lots of messy pieces of software and deal with interrupts and strange operating system things that you never thought you'd have to worry about. But, but you know, we learn. Okay, so summary. So we're discovering how to exploit more information from the speech signal. And the idea is to improve the user experience. And if you have more questions, you can go to the website, or you can actually talk to me. <laughs>